So welcome back to another episode. And this is amazing. Over the years, I've covered a few things Turbo Graphics, a few things PC Engine, but I've never done a full dedicated PC Engine episode. And I'm a, I'm a mega fan, and I'm gonna go right back to the beginning and explain what got me into this crazy hobby of collecting for the PC Engine in Japan. First of all, here it is. The small, the beautiful, the PC Engine. Now, this got released in Japan in 1987. And at the time, it was supposed to compete with the Famicom and the Master System, or also known as the Mark III in Japan. And I, I didn't know anything about it back then. I was just playing my regular Nintendo, living in America, having a good old fashioned time. I had no idea that this was released, not until 1988-89, when I got a video game magazine and I was looking through it. It was a GamePro magazine. And I saw this advertisement for the next generation systems in Japan, the Mega Drive, and this beautiful little machine here, the PC Engine. And I was looking and I was mesmerized. I'm like, what the fuck is this small little machine over there? And they were showing that you didn't just put cartridges into it, you put in, here we go, credit card size video games, Hue cards, right here. And you just grab your machine, and you just click it in like so. Unbelievable. And I was fascinated that you could play these video games. This is a video game. I, I, I'm, I gotta say this again. I couldn't believe this was a video game. I was like, oh my God. And I had all these fantasies back then of having a PC engine and having about five or six games that I could just put in my pocket and walk down to my friend's place. I didn't have to bring over you know, a big bag full of NES games or Master System games. It could be so compact and I I thought it was it was so next generation. It really was at the time and uh, I, I just loved the credit card sized uh, games. They were so cool. Now the weird thing is, is I've never talked about this on the show. Back when I was like, it must, I must have been about 14, 15 years old. We took a bus, which was a big deal back then, up to a local mall. It was called Guilford Mall. And it was near Christmas time, I'll never forget it, with some of my friends. And there was a store that some guys had rented out, you know, a store space. And they were selling all kinds of electronics. And they showed, uh, and they were trying to sell, a brand new video game machine out of Japan called the Core Graphics. And me and my friends, we walked into this store and I'm like, oh my god, that's the PC Engine. I, I already kind of knew what this was. And they were showing... Batman playing on it and a few other games. I remember Armed F was another game. And we all just were blown away with the graphics of this thing. It was like, you know, we're just coming off the NES, which looked nice and th honestly, this is a, you know, an 8-bit machine as well, but it was giving you kind of a, a pseudo 16-bit feeling to it. And we were like, oh my God, this is fantastic. So I remember, and this is stupid. I don't know why we ever did this. It was like a couple of weeks later. We, I, I don't even know why I'm telling the story. But some of my friends, I was hanging over their house, we always used to skip school back then, they prank called this store, and I'll never forget, they phoned up and they're like, hello, do you have the core graphics? And the guy's like, yeah, we, we got the core graphics. What games do you have for the core graphics? <laughs> I don't know why we did that. It's the stupidest thing ever. We were so into it. We so wanted to be a part of it, but we had no money when we were kids. So we were just fucking idiots. So I don't know why I brought up that story, but that's, that's, I just wanted to show you the times. Now, eventually the PC Engine came over to America and they called it the TurboGrafx-16. And they completely changed the look of it. Uh, and I don't think for the better. I love this design. This design is just fantastic. But they changed it and tried to make it more American-y, I guess. I don't know. But it wasn't, it was a very big failure, uh, unfortunately. And and I love the Turbo Graphics. I did. I've done an episode on that. But anyways, this is the PC Engine. There's a core graphics version, as I talked about, which is gray. And then we have this. And I did an episode on this a long time ago. This is the PC Engine Shuttle. This, I believe, was to appeal to children. And you put your Hue cards right here. I'll stick it out of here. In the front, just like that. And then it flies off into the sunset. No, 
This is it. This is really it. You hook it up uh, through the back here. Your controller port is here. That's another thing. To play multiple player games on these machines, you need a multi-tap to hook up uh, other controllers to it. But this is another unusual design, totally uh, cosmetically created for the Japanese market and for kids to appeal to, to children. I, I always loved this. I saw this in video game magazines back in the day with the Super Graphics, which was supposed to be the successor to the PC Engine, which failed even more miserably than the Turbo Graphics did in America. But I always loved this design. Very, very cool. Now, the card games for the PC Engine weren't bad at all. They were great, great things. But the PC Engine was about to do something that nobody had done before. And that is released a CD-ROM attachment, just like that. Here's your CD-ROM. And this just opened up the world to incredible cinematics, incredible music, music that was just so unbelievable. You could have symphony music while you're playing an RPG. And did they use that? Yes, they did. So a lot of RPGs and fighting games had these incredible soundtracks that were bigger than the games. Now, this is one such unit here. I got this from Luke Moore's one years ago. And what's really cool is, to click that on, look at that, you got a little suitcase, a little PC Engine suitcase. And you can go over to your friend's places with about 100 games in your pocket back then. So I think what has always fascinated me about the PC Engine is all the games that we never got over here. And as you can see, this is a very small portion of the PC Engine Super CD-ROM uh, library. It is a huge library of games. I, I can't even begin to imagine collecting them all, nor do I try. These are some of the games I've collected over the years that really have meant something to me, something that I've, I've wanted to own. But PC Engine collecting now has gone astronomical. Some games are three to four to a thousand dollars in price. It's really a hard system to collect for nowadays. But if you're going to get into the Turbo Graphics or the PC Engine, I'm telling you the PC Engine is the way to go because you can get a lot of games uh, on the PC Engine. They're, they're exact du duplicates on the Turbo Graphics, but they're cheaper on the PC Engine. They're cheaper. So remember that if you're thinking about getting into it, think about the kind of games that you want to get into and think, hey, you know what? Like, which is the cheaper alternative? Do you want to collect for the Turbo Graphics? Which is insane. I can't even collect for the Turbo Graphics anymore. It's just too, too expensive. But PC Engine is a great way to start out. You can get one of these units for maybe $30 to $40. And then you can get some games for like $10 plus shipping on eBay, honestly, for a lot of cool older titles. Now, speaking of titles, I'm not going to go through all of these today. That would be impossible. And I'm also not going to go through all the Super CD-ROM games today. That would be impossible. I'm going to save those for the future. But I thought I'd look at some of the games that I really have liked on chip form, on Hue Card over the years. So first up is Volume 1 of the PC Engine Collection. It is Legendary Axe. I mentioned it before, we got this on the Turbo Graphics. This is the Japanese version, and it's a side-scrolling action game where you play as a caveman, fighting your way through like hordes and hordes of enemies and bears and bats and thousands of things that want to knock you off ledges. It's it's a great game though. The power-up system for your axe is really, really good. It's it's one of those games that when I got it on the Turbo Graphics, I played this religiously. I really did. It's it's definitely hard in the later stages though. And here we go. We got it over here as Bonk. It was known as PC Kid in Japan. Here we go. Here's PC Kid, a great classic. Another side view action game for the PC engine. And let me just say, there's a lot of platforming games on this, side view uh, action platforming games. There's also a lot of shooters, side view shooters. I'm not talking about first person shooters. I'm talking about side scrolling uh, shooters with spaceships and stuff like that. That was the term that we used back then. We called them shooters. Nowadays, they call them shmups. I've never been a fan of the word shmups, but huge amount of shooters on the machine, huge amount of platforming action games. A great amount. And also, another reason why I love this collection, a huge amount of RPGs. I mean, you, I mean, in America, we got maybe like 
10 or 20 back in the early days. These guys got hundreds. Honestly, there was that many. Another great game, Jackie Chan. This is a fantastic side view game. I really, really like this. Really big characters, really good animation for the time, good sound effects, and a really catchy soundtrack. And you can't own a PC Engine or a Turbo Graphics without having a copy of the classic Splatterhouse, the arcade game. Now, there's been a few ports of this. This is not the best port out there, but it is a faithful adaption, and this is what we played. When I was younger, this is the only way to play Splatterhouse. It really was. I, my friend Andrew down the street had the uh, American version, uh, version of Splatterhouse, and he brought that over Christmas morning when I got ease. And so we had a pretty good double header that morning for video game action. You gotta get Splatterhouse, it's really good. Final Blaster, not a bad side view shooting game. There was a lot of these, as I say. Speaking of shooting games, one of my favorite on the system Besides, you know, obviously, the, you know, Lords of Thunder and all of that kind of stuff was Soldier Blade. Soldier Blade. This is arguably one of my favorite shooters on the system. I also like Aero Blasters a hell of a lot. Okay, another shooter. And this one's a kind of a cutesy style one where you play as a little helicopter. Mr. Heli. I like this because you can go multiple different ways through a level. You can go straight down, left, right. Uh, very imaginative, really fun. Uh, I, I really like the graphics of it, very cartoony. Now, when I was younger, I used to go to a comic book store all the time, and they had this great Capcom arcade game called Tiger Road. God damn it. Little did I know that people in Japan were playing this at home while I was playing it in the arcades back then. And this is a, a conversion uh, of it for the PC Engine, Tiger Road. Really good side view action game. And one of the best on the PC Engine is Double Dungeons. No, no it's not. No, it's not. But if I need something else to hold up one of my shelves, I know where to look. Now I played this with my friend Swagger all the time, Military Madness. This is the Japanese version, Nectarus. The same game, just in Japanese and the first to come out. Now when I got a Turbo Graphics, I think one of the very first games that I ever played, and I boarded it off a friend of mine, was R-Type. R-Type was probably one of the biggest shooting games in the arcades back then, and we all were blown away with it. We just liked the side view shooting elements of it, uh, you know, the, the one bit that you can get that flies around your ship, and also the Giger uh, kind of aliens in the game as well. That just kind of brought it to a different level. Now, one of my favorite arcade games was the Ninja Warriors. And the Sega CD got a really fantastic port of the Ninja Warriors. And the PC Engine got a port of it, we'll call it. It's not, it's definitely not the best version of it, but at least you can play it. It is Ninja Warriors on the PC Engine. It's, it used to be three screens, now it's one. The animation's not quite there. Yeah, it's a, the most inferior version, but I like having it. Some people have complained about this version, but for me, this was the only way I could play the original Shinobi, and I thought it was the closest to arcade uh, to have at home back in the day for the PC Engine. Uh, Shinobi, the original arcade Shinobi. And I think this was a really competent port of it. I, I love this, I've been this multiple times. It's fucking hard. I actually, I did a playthrough of the arcade version. Uh, halfway through, actually near to the later levels until I went insane. Now, not a lot of people know about this game, Ninja Gaiden, yes! There's a version of Ninja Gaiden for the PC Engine, and it is a beautiful, playing, really great version of it. So, it's expensive though, I, I don't know what this is up to, I bought this a long time ago. It's a beautiful version though, I really, really highly recommend it. Oh, I was talking about this earlier, I played this, I think in Oregon, when I was younger at this 5 cent arcade, and that was Aero Blasters, and it's a great arcade game and a really, really nice port. It also got brought to America as well. Ah, <laughs> yeah. When I was checking out the core graphics uh, in that store back then, they also had a copy of Armed F. And to have a look at the this the box art there, this blew my mind. I was like, I think it was so cool because I was just really into anime. 
and I was starting to see all these Japanese anime s games, at least uh, you know anime style artwork for the box arts, and I I loved it. I loved the cell shading, and that's what always got me about Arm Def. The game is okay; it's not bad, but it was always the cover art that I remembered. Now every single machine has had a port of this. The PC Engine was no different, and. You know, it got ported so many times because it was such a wonderful treasured game out of the arcade, and that is Fantasy Zone. Fantasy Zone. It's a really fun side view shooter uh, where you can go uh, buy weapons, upgrade your weapons, fight through the levels, get to the end bosses, destroy them, and rinse and repeat. But let me tell you, holy fuck, it's hard. It drives me crazy, this game. Now, this was a big hit in America, and I mean a big hit that everybody who played this game loved it, and they would rant about it, and we talked about it in our circles at school, it was a, a cherished game on the Turbo Graphics, and here we go, the Japanese version, Ninja Spirits, wow, one of the best ninja games back in 1989, 1990, let me tell you, it is a really, really fun game with the most catchiest soundtrack of any Turbo Graphics game that's on card. Now that is a small selection of games from the PC Engine library, but you can see there's so many wonderful games for this machine, and I haven't even touched this entire library that I personally collected over the years, and it's one collection that I do collect for once in a while, whether I'm at a convention, I'll buy one or two games here and there, but I can't afford the really, really expensive ones. I'm usually like, oh, that game's 10 bucks, that's 20 bucks, and that's the thing, there is a lot of low-priced PC Engine games, if you're curious, they're not all super expensive. Most of these games I got for cheap, Back in the day, now I look at the prices and I'm like, man, what the hell has happened to PC Engine collecting? It never used to be like this for sure, but I've loved this machine. I've always really, really loved it. I think I love it so much that it just, it's so Japan. It really is so Japan. It's one of those machines that we never got to explore back then. We didn't. We got the Turbo Graphics and the selection that they presented to us. But look what was out there. I'm telling you, there's hundreds upon hundreds more games than this. It'll, it would blow your mind. It really, it really would. And I'm gonna cover them. I'm gonna cover most of these games in the next two to three years of the show. Really, <laughs> if I'm still alive, if I'm still alive, I'll still be covering the PC Engine and its vast, incredible library of incredible games, incredible shooters, incredible RPGs, incredible platformers. So, anyways, guys, until next time.